I did stick this down a little bit, but uh, it'll probably get replaced because I found an even smaller Bluetooth adapter that I had. So that'll be nice. But I figure if I can fit this one, I might be able to fit some of the small flash drives. Uh, what else? One key was routing the wire that goes to the touch screen this direction here and through the hole where the, um, see it there? Right in the center, the hole where the uh, wireless antenna wire goes. Um, this way um, there wasn't anything binding around the edge of the motherboard. So now I'm just going to futz with getting the wires to work. There is another wire that comes from the uh, camera port on the motherboard that's um, running underneath here. It doesn't show. It comes around there, here, and then it flips at the very top of the motherboard to plug into the connector that you see here. Okay, I'm going to work on tucking everything. I have this four strand wire here that's going to be plugging into the Bluetooth if, uh, when that plug comes. Well, here's that uh, touch screen connector coming through the hole. Thank you, Dell, for making that nice little hole to put things. I'll probably hook it somewhere up here and tuck all the spare wires right there. One thing to check is to make sure that there aren't any wires like this one that's blocking that hole. I'm pretty sure that something screws through that hole, so you don't want to punch that wire. Have to move this a little bit. Actually, not a bad fit. These are going to come down the middle here. Come out. Got the lid. The screws. We'll have just a little bulge there. We'll have these wires coming out through the middle. Next trick is trying to get the bezel off. Now, the Dell Take Apart apparently says that you kind of snap. Put your fingers under. Now, I did not take the whole lid off because there didn't seem to be any reason to do that. See how that snapping goes. Okay, this wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Work underneath here. Click, 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 all the way around. Just keep going around, and then eventually it'll start to come apart here. Like this. Put the nails under here. Give a little pop. It's a little bendy, so you might think it's going to break, but... Oh, man. That one does not want to come loose. Let me get a look underneath and see what's holding it. So the little snappy edges here, and then all the way around the edge. If you get it started and you're doing this movement on the inside, you can also stick your thumb from the outside and pop these. So just go slowly. Almost there. Under the lid, you can see where my cam, cam camera does not live. We've got Wi-Fi antennas. Speakers. This machine is a lot easier to get into than a EPC, but I guess it's two inches larger in diagonal. On the underside of the lid, there's a little magnet here that would correspond to around here, maybe. There must be a little magnetic sensor. Maybe it's this little guy. There. For sleep, I would guess. Alright, nothing else interesting on the back of this, except for lots of clips. Did come off pretty easily. I'm going to insert the touch screen and wire that up. Okay, cleaned off the screen. Don't want to trap any dust in there. Got the touch screen now. Now, notice the cord's coming off my left here. It's going to go on this way. They have some 3M adhesive on here already. See the little green strips? So i got to pull that backing off. Then I've got to mount it just right. Be right back. I will say this is a much nicer kit than back when I was doing the EPC. They have that nice double-sided stuff stuck all the way around the edge here. The little green strip came off. Now I'm going to put it on. Okay, so far so good. Now they give some little rubber bumpers that are supposed to go around the outside all around the metal edge, I think. This is probably so the bezel doesn't uh, bow outward. 
Okay, rubber bumpers placed like in the manual. One here, one here, one here, one here. And these are on the outside edge on the metal. And I have a feeling, now that I think about it, it's probably to protect the touch screen so that it doesn't get cracked. These are pretty fragile. Okay, I took the uh, plastic off. And now I have a matte screen, which actually is my preference anyway, so maybe this will work out. I'm going to connect this yellow ribbon cable to the black um, wire that came up from the other side. Find a place to tuck, snap things back together, and keep our fingers crossed. Okay, this wire tucking was a major pain, but it's done. I had so much wire left here because I came through the hole, I think, instead of around some side route. I had to take this wire and double it back a couple times, tuck it underneath here, and put the plug here. The ribbon cable comes down, they suggest making a loop, so I went down and over, see the loop right here, and then tuck it in here next to the case. So, I'm going to try assembling now. Okay, that went together really easily. Just line it up, go snap, 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 snap around the top, and around, and around, and around, and there you go. And, no gap, no real bulge. Nice, good fit. Okay, putting everything back now. When putting screws in, always be careful that there's not some new wire that I added to the system that's going to get shorted. I tried to kill my EPC that way at least twice. Before putting the foam rest thing back on, make sure that the speakers plug in. AC power. Camera to the hub, camera port to the hub, and the microphone port. I had actually undone that for flipping. Okay, put the power, the AC um, supply ribbon cable back, put the trackpad ribbon cable back, try to push it in as evenly as you can and have that little black line parallel to the um, clip, and then close the little brown clamp onto it. Over here we see the four wires that I'm going to be using to plug into the Bluetooth port, and um, Probably I'll have to take this, at least this half of the lid off to solder those later. Seven screws to insert. I pushed on the little heat sink pad places just to make sure we got a little contact there. Keyboard next. Don't forget to attach the ribbon cable here. Flip, put the other screws in. We'll power up. After a false start yesterday, it turns out I had originally thought that this plug was the one that plugged into the cam. So I had it sticking off of this end, which is the source. And it should not have been. It should have been one of the ha cam ports, because this is actually where you would plug in your male cam port. So I had this one and this one swapped. I had to take the whole thing, and loosen all the screws, open the board, swap back the wires, and now I'm closing it again, hoping that it will work. I did find it was easier the second round to get the uh, keypad rest off by just putting thumbs in around the edges here and popping it all the way around rather than starting with that plastic tab thing that they talked about underneath here in the hinge. Okay, I have a working touch screen. Just a couple more notes. The Eagle Axe for our PowerPC, it's version 1.16.91. 1916 that I'm using. And this is at the URL up here. So, install that. It's an application. Opens this program here. You can see the touch screen showing up as an interface. I selected that and used four points count. Okay, so search for the web. Just use my fingernail. Use my nail on this side. So 
select things with my nail. So it's great. Website. And on the back, it's my three uh, USB ports.